I'm a songwriter and a creator and a mom and a daughter and a sister and a member of the community. And I always try to notice what I'm thinking about a lot, what's really taking over a lot of my mental energy. Because if I pay attention, I tend to see that it pops up all over my life. It's popping up in my relationships, it's popping up in my work, it happens in the way I'm absorbing what's happening on the world stage as well as our, over our dinner table. And the two things that are really hijacking my mental process at the moment are about incremental progress. I'm a person who really like would like all of life to be like those home makeover shows where they just come in. Like, I'm super sad that Oprah's not on anymore because she could totally come to my house and do some serious awesomeness. Life asks a lot of us and asks that we take baby steps and asks that we make progress every day in these kind of bite-sized pieces. And the patience and the discipline that's required of that for me is very challenging. So that's one thing. And then the second thing is the constant desire to return to a state of gratitude and mindfulness. I feel this is a message I keep getting. Many of us get it, I'm sure. You get it in a yoga class or a meditation group in a really forward way, but also just in, you know, somebody gives you a candle, believe, yes, I believe, I'm trying really hard, or like it's on a commercial that touches your heartstrings and is trying to help you remember to slow down and to smell the roses and to be where you are and to acknowledge the things around you and to be grateful for them because it can certainly be far more harrowing than many of us experience here in Park City, or at least that I've been lucky enough to experience here. And the gratitude piece and the mindfulness piece is a little challenging as an artist also because I tend to believe that dissatisfaction and discontent is one of the drivers for innovation. We don't really push to move or make a solution for something unless there's something that's not working for us or that there's a conflict that comes up. It's because maybe there's some severe unfairness in the world or there's something that needs to be remedied. So that discontent is something I, I always pay attention to and I want to think about and discuss and fix. And so to then take the other side of it and be thinking about gratitude is, it, it's a little bit swimming upstream for me, as grateful as I am and as appreciative as I should be and, and really want to be so often every day. So these two things are floating around my consciousness so much and then this TEDx Women event came up and I thought, okay, the theme is bold and brilliant. I'm not really sure how those two elements fit into bold and brilliant. And the more I thought about bold and brilliant, I realized that there's a sense of brevity about both of those elements. Bold is big and it's a leap of faith and it's usually some impactful, important thing that we do or decide. But in that moment of doing or deciding, it's kind of a quick thing. It's kind of like there might be a long on-ramp to get to the point where you've decided to do something or chosen to speak up or decided to act. But in that moment, once the cat's out of the bag, you're kind of committed, right? And I think it's such an exciting thing to think about boldness because it's a little risky. It's cool as hell, but it's risky. Something is at stake. There's a lot kind of rolling on this. And so to be bold asks a lot of us. And the most important thing it asks of us is the follow-up. Like, you can be bold till the cows come home, but if you can't, like, walk the walk after you've talked the talk, nobody's going to care about your bold announcements in the future because you just can't support it. So there's that piece, this bold announcement decision, the thing that's going to change everything. And then there's brilliance, which also seems a little brevity-driven to me because the brilliance isn't really a sustainable vibe or a mindset that one lives in, because I, I could be wrong, but I kind of believe if you're, if you're walking around thinking how brilliant you are, there's a good chance you are obnoxious. And so it might be better to allow other people to assign the compliment of brilliance to you or you, your work or to appreciate something about your mindset or your process. But it's a little weird to kind of self-identify with that. And I also find brilliance tends to be something that comes after the fact. It tends to be the thing 
that is evaluative, that, that we've noticed, we've judged, we've appreciated, this effervescent, shining, transcendent beauty that is something of value or something of extraordinary contribution. That's brilliant to me. That's the way I kind of accept it. And that's where I think maybe the incremental steps might fit in. We might look back at the trajectory, trajectory of our lives and see, wow, that was amazing. I am really pleased with this incredible journey that I've, I've been on and that I've been able to face these challenges and fight off those monsters and do some incredible things. But in the day-to-day -day stuff, it can be pretty darn hard. And maybe that's where the gratitude and the mindfulness comes in. So I'm asking myself to pay attention to those things. And a friend of mine, Lindsay, here in town, had a beautiful farm called Mountain Song Farms. And she undertook the project of raising crops on this farm, not only like the labor of love that so many farmers and ranchers and people who work with the land um, approach it with, but also as this beautiful act of artisanship. She just cared about it and wrote about it and took pictures about it. And it just felt like you were right there with her in the trenches. And I watched as her body grew most, more sinewy when she did this hard work. And it was very inspiring to see her in the daily work of it. And it occurred to me, you can't grow a crop in a day. It's one of those things that requires steps. You can't even plant the, all the crops in a day. There, there are measured things that need to do. And most farmers will say that you have to be grateful all along. You have to love the process or you're not gonna be a farmer for long. The money, I grew up in Illinois and the money has gotten harder and harder to sustain for farmers. They sell off their land for housing subdivisions because their kids and grandkids can't imagine how they're gonna make a living from it for the next 20 years. And so, Lindsay inspired me to write a song for her called Mountain Song that I'd like to share with you now. And it's been part of this journey um, of trying to reconcile the incremental, the gratitude, and the mindfulness. I hope you like it. drawn you from all around to see what they will find the mountains watched us come and go the boom and bust years ebb and flow all the stories these old hills can tell moments lost in time still can hear them echoing on main street in the night thousand some 
out in mid-September Share them with your friends Like the perfect songs one night The artists make and sell their pieces Scraping by on pricey leases Brilliance born in jeans and fleeces To chronicle what's real Still we're called here here to stay, to work so hard and get to play, to know the seasons and feel the rays of sunlight on the fields. The east side, it reminds us how the ranches and the farm, while it's gently ground the valleys wrapped up in the mountain's arms. And hear her reach She'll be standing strong. And this is a mountain song. This is a mountain song. Thank you. One of the pitfalls of that big between space between boldness and brilliance for me is isolation and loneliness. But at the same time, I frequently want everyone to go away so I can do my thing and kind of put my head down and get some stuff done. And the complicating element of relationships is a part of that. It's, there's certainly nothing like your relationships to put you in the moment, whether they're great or whether they're challenging. And I don't know about, about you all, but kids, um, at least my kids, have a shocking disregard for the sacred nature of the creative process. <laughs> and I, I have found so many times I'm just on the edge of a breakthrough with a song or you know, really making headway. And this is the moment where this person who is totally probably not going to burn himself making a grilled cheese sandwich really needs me to intervene and feed him. And so, and this, this also could be a personal thing, or this might be some amygdala-driven uh, woman instinct, but I find it's extremely hard when someone I love needs me not to just drop everything and to put my stuff aside and to be there for them. And there's a big part of me that thinks this is being a good partner, this is being a good mother, this is, this is being who, you know, a loving, higher self kind of person. But then there's this other part of me that is like, no, no, I, I'm an individual also. And I am hoping to kind of achieve some brilliance when I get to the other side there and I'm looking back over this huge map of my life and I don't think grilled cheese are going to cut it for me. <laughs> so I, I'm thinking about, about that Thanksgiving a couple years ago and um, Mark and I uh, host concerts at our house sometimes if I've got a musician friend who's coming through town and so um, I'll set it up and sell tickets and the neighborhood comes over and brings some food and wine. It's really a great time. If anybody wants to come, come talk to me afterwards. I tend to get up and do just a song or two to kind of, you know, check the audio and everything and also um, welcome the performer. And I was thinking a lot about these similar themes in our lives and the day-to-day -day grind of it, just the trickiness of slogging through some of the less exciting, less sexy stuff than the big leap of faith or the glorious, triumphant, brilliant landing. And it was just really pulling me down. And I was stressed out, house was a mess, all these people are coming over, and I'm like, why am I writing a song right now? Because that's the way my mind works. It's like, I have a lot of things to do, then that's when my butt's in the piano seat, like really excited to just nail down a song. And I'm working on this song, and I'm, I'm like, oh, nobody cares about these, this banal kind of stuff from my life. But it brought me around. By the time I had finished the song, I was in this place of extreme gratitude and feeling so, so glad for this opportunity to write and to share music with our friends and neighbors and to support an up-and-coming musician. And it, 
it, it became this song that whether or not anybody else kind of connects with it or not, it, it mattered to me and it helped me connect with it. And over the years, I've started realizing that making one small, bold, creative act every day, something completely doable, has changed my relationship with how isolated and how, I don't want to say bitter, but resentful I can feel sometimes if I'm not able to throw myself into a project with like all the time and all the gear and a Michael's craft size cart full of stuff to play with. And sometimes you can't have that all at once, but you do have content and you've got ideas and maybe it means just journaling or I like Bujo bullet journaling a lot because it allows you to kind of fill in some of that vacuum, that space between the big projects so you remember that you are an engaged person. You remember you're part of this creative flow. This is the song I wrote. I hope you like it. It's called um, Thankful for It All. Someone else said how they 
rarely seems a moment for myself between the bunnies and the new schools the dishes and the carpools waking up at midnight to move that fucking elf and what I've been forgetting is the sweetness of connection three Exhausted soul still so in love, and that life is in the trying, the laughter and the crying, the dreaming and the finding, all the diamonds in the rough. And I'm thankful for it all, thankful for it all. Too often I get it. Thank you all so much.